So as a few of you will know, I started using Luna when it came out over a year ago. And I thought it was probably about time to revisit it to see, am I still using Luna? What do I think of it a year on? Do I still think it's a good door? What do I think of the improvements that it's had over the last year? Am I still using it or have I switched to another door? And how is it stacking up against some of the big players in the DAW world? Let's find out. What is up guys? My name is Ben Hartwell. Thanks for checking out the channel. If it's your first time here, or even if it's not, why not smash that subscribe button? It really does help out the channel. So Luna, first off, am I still using it? Yeah, I'm 99% in Luna these days. Pretty much every project that I'm doing is based in Luna. I still do move back to Studio One for the odd little thing that I either can't do in Luna or it's just a bit easier to do in Studio One. And some of those problems brought on in Luna are only due to the fact that I switched to Apple Silicon with their M1 chip. And up until this week, Luna was technically not supported on M1. So for the odd little thing, I was shifting back to Studio One. But yeah, for the vast majority of my work, I'm now fully in Luna. And I'm really enjoying it. What with the constant updates and improvements we're getting and just the feel and the sound that Luna has, I don't think my work has ever sounded this good. And I don't think I've ever found it this easy to get the sounds that I'm after. But there's no point in me talking about it, so let's jump into the computer and I'll show you all the things that I'm loving about Luna. Okay, so we're in the computer and we're in Luna. So let me show you some of the things that I think make Luna so amazing. So if I load up a project, Top of my list for the things that I love about Luna is how it saves all of your input data per session. So for example, in this session here, we were recording two vocal microphones. Now, if I re-enable the record on the second microphone, you can see that it's remembered that we were using the Neve preamp. It's remembered the settings for that Neve preamp. So that channel is set up exactly as it was during the tracking. So if we ever needed to record again, if you needed to do some punch-ins or anything like that at a later date, all those settings are saved, so we're gonna get exactly the same sound. And that works across the mixer on every single track that's got a recording input. So if I go back to our other vocal track, re-enable the record on that one, you can see it's loaded up this version of the Neve preamp. All the settings are saved, exactly the same. The only thing that's changed from the recording is the 48 volts is disabled because there's nothing plugged into it at the moment. But you can see how useful that is, especially when you get into some bigger sessions and you've got loads of inputs, having all that information stored, it saves you having to create cheat sheets during the recording process that list all of your inputs and all of your settings just stored right there in each session. The next thing that I really love about Luna is the ARM mode or accelerated real-time monitoring mode. It's really easy to do. All we have to do is enable ARM mode. And then let's say I was recording this clean guitar channel here. That guitar is now gonna record in virtually zero latency. So it means that when you're recording, you don't have to worry about buffer sizes. We don't have to be battling with delay. It's all taken care of via Luna and through the UAD hardware. The only downside to ARM is that it does disable any plugins that aren't universal audio. So for example, on this channel, I've got a Pro-Q from FabFilter. I can't track and record through that plugin because it's not UAD. The only real time that becomes a problem for me is when I'm using things like Helix Native or I'm using GGD Silicabs, as those plugins will be disabled with ARM mode on. But I think it is a fair enough compromise as you get zero latency during that recording. And ARM doesn't disable lunar extensions, including the Neve summon and the Oxide tape, which I use all the time. And speaking of lunar extensions, that's the next thing that I love in Luna. As you can see from this session, I really like using Neve summon and the Oxide tape. And I love the fact that they're just built straight into Luna and they sound so good. Previous to when I moved over to Luna and I was still working in Studio One, I would load up tape plugins. I would load up things like the non-linear summer from Waves to try and emulate what the Neve Summon is doing. And I could never quite get the sound that I was after. With Luna, it's just a case of loading them up onto the channels and the sound is 90% there. And that's something I've heard a lot of people talking about, the sound that Luna has compared to other doors. And I think they're right. I think it does have its own unique sound. Some doors are very clinical and sterile and it's exactly a reproduction of what you put in. 
Luna seems to be more leaning towards the kind of old school style of recording and it does seem to have its own kind of sound and I really like it. Everything that I seem to record in Luna seems to gel together really nicely come mixing. I never seem to have to work quite as hard in Luna to get a mix that I think is working. Now that could be down to the extensions like Neve's Humming and Oxide or it could just be the way that Luna works in general. But I really like the sound that comes out of it. And speaking of the kind of old school way of doing things, that is kind of how Luna is set up to work. It does almost feel like you sat using an old console with the insert point acting like old analog hardware inserts. The way everything is routed through Luna and into separate buses, through the tape and through the summing, not to say that you couldn't achieve the same kind of thing in other doors, just the way that Luna feels and the way it flows does feel very kind of old school workflow. And it's a way of working that a lot of us are very familiar with. And I think that's why a lot of people are liking it. The next thing that I really like in Luna is the way that the queue system works. Queue systems indoors can get really complicated really quickly, but with Luna and the Apollo hardware, it makes it really simple. All the queues show up down here under the queue section. So in this setup, you can see that I have two separate queue options. They are my headphone outs that I have on the front of my Apollo X6. So I could use those for two separate headphone mixes and all I have to do is turn up each individual knob depending on what the artist wants to hear. So in this case, let's say that the guitar player was on Q2 and they wanted more of that clean guitar. All I'd have to do is turn it up until it got to the level that they were comfortable with. Another thing that you can do in Luna is you could set this to faders rather than knobs. If that's a workflow that you're more familiar with and it does give you a really good overview of what's actually happening across your Q-mix. For example, if I was to dial in a quick mix, it gives you a really good idea at a glance what is being sent to that headphone output. And you can also do this with the sends. So it depends on what you want to see at a glance and how much screen real estate you've got to work with, whether you choose to have them on faders or rotaries. I tend to switch between the two, but the majority of the time I do have it in rotaries so that I can see the whole channel strip in one go. Some of the other things that you can do within the queue system in Luna is you can open up this little option box here and you can change some of the options of what each queue mix is actually gonna hear. So you can see that I have Q2 set to mix. So it's basically hearing the output from Luna. Another thing that I found really easy to do in Luna is automation. So if I switch back to my timeline, so you can see here on this acoustic bus, I have some automation already written. And what that's doing is controlling the overall volume of this bus channel. But let's say I wanted to control something else in the automation. It's as easy as clicking this volume button here. And then these are all of the things that I could automate on that bus channel. So for example, I can automate simple things like the volume, the pan, but I can also automate any parameter on any of the plugins that I have on that channel. So I have an LA-2A on the first insert of that channel. And here are all of the options in that LA-2A that I could have automated. So I could click gain and I could draw in some automation for the gain of that LA-2A. And now as that plays back, you can see here the gain changing based on that automation. One problem I have found with automation in Luna is it's not always really easy to grab a section of automation to move it. Let me show you what I mean. If I draw in a simple automation curve, Let's say that I wanted to move this curve. In other doors, I could click all three points and move them up and down. I can grab the whole thing and move it up and down, but if I want to move this whole section, I have to highlight and move it like that, which is adding extra control points. There might be another way of doing it that I'm not aware of, but I have found it a bit of a pain when I'm trying to move whole sections of automation. But on the whole, I really like how automation works in Luna. And the last thing that I really like about the way Universal Audio is dealing with Luna is all of the updates we're getting. Updates have been coming thick and fast over the past year to the point where we've been getting them almost weekly at some points. Now before I started recording for this video, one of the things I was going to mention is the fact that UAD have still not got Luna M1 certified. I switched over to M1 a few months ago and I've been using Luna on the M1 but in Rosetta mode. Not being able to use shape within Luna has been a real pain. The workaround that I've had to do is to take my session back to my Intel MacBook Pro, do any shape work within Luna that I want to do there, then bounce out all those shape instruments as audio files, then re-import them all back into my M1 session. 
a bit of a pain, especially if I wanted to go back and change anything in those instruments, but it did kind of work. As far as other issues or cons that I've got with Luna at the moment, the big one is that there's still no controller support. So there's no plugging in of a fader port or anything like that. It just does not work with Luna at the moment. I really want to get hold of one of the new SSL controllers, and I think there are some workarounds to get that working in Luna, but at the moment, unsupported. But I do know it is something that I'm working on, and they have been showing us some bits and pieces where they have got controllers working in the office hours on YouTube. But at the moment, unsupported. And the only other real issue I've had has been with Melodyne in Luna. And it seems to be some kind of problem related to having other plugins on a channel that's got Melodyne on it. You can do all the pitch correction and everything seems to work fine. The playback is fine within Luna. Then you come to export it and the vocal is full of pops and crackles. And I can't really work out why. The only real workaround I've found is to have just Melodyne on that vocal track. Do all the pitch correction, export that single track as just one audio file and then re-employ it back into Luna. And 90% of the time, that seems to work okay. You do occasionally get some kind of noise, some pops and crackles, you have to go back and re-export it and then re-import it. But for the moment, that does seem like a workaround. I don't know whether it's a problem with Melodyne or a problem with Luna, but they just don't seem to be working too great together at the moment. And speaking of updates, man, have we had a lot of updates to the point where we're getting one a week at some point. Some of the things that we've had to introduce since the first version of Luna are improvements to editing controls. One of the really cool additions was to all the click options so we can easily change things like counting bars and click during playback. Another cool one was the introduction of the utility row so we can do things like polarity adjustments and we can do delay compensation. It was really needed was that one. And the newest addition is the console row, which I have yet to use, but looks like a new really cool way of working in Luna. At the moment, it has the API vision strip that you can use, and it seems to be leading us even further into that old school way of working where we've got channel strips all laid out in front of us and all the controls readily available. I'm gonna try the vision strip over the next few weeks and try it on a few projects that I'm working on and see how I get on with it. But I think I'm gonna really like it. And I think the way UAD is going to go is they're going to have multiple different versions of the console like they did with the Neve Summon. So at the moment we've got the API vision strip and I think we're probably going to get an SSL version and maybe a Neve version. So maybe further down the line I can do a comparison of all of those. But that's kind of really it as far as the cons go for Luna. I have read and heard people saying they're having problems with third party plugins. I've not really had any issues. As you can see in this session I've got Wave stuff running fine, I've got loads of fab filters all running no problem at all, I've got ozone which I use on every mix, no problems at all. The only small niggle that I've had with any third party plugins has been the Shadow Hills Master Compressor and during playback it does seem to make things stutter a little bit on the readouts but the audio itself is fine and all the controls still work, no problem. So third party plugins haven't been an issue for me. And that's kind of it as far as the downsides to Luna Go for me. Another thing that I now really love in Luna that at first I was kind of a bit hesitant because I was used to the way it was dealt with in Studio One is version takes or Studio One will call them layers. So if I take this bass track here, you can see I've got the versions open and this is take number three of the four takes that were done for this bass. You can easily switch between all the takes that were done for this bass here, add new takes, rename the takes. Comping is just a case of finding the part that you like, selecting it, pressing C, copy, go to the comp and press V to paste it. And now that I've got used to this way of working, I think it's super fast. It keeps things really organized and I actually prefer it to the way that I used to work in Studio One. The only thing I would change is I would like to be able to set up regions like this and loop them. And for each time the loop restarted during recording for it to automatically create a new take. That would be amazing. But at the moment doing it manually is no big deal. And it does keep things really organized. And speaking of shape instruments, oh my God, do they all sound amazing. This is a session that I'm currently working on that contains quite a bit of shape in it. Um, we've got a piano and a bunch of string stuff. And this is all shape instruments. I was provided with the MIDI for the pianos and then I've built the orchestral parts around it. I did have to do it all on my Intel Mac and then bounce them out so that I could do it on the M1. But they just sound so good. I can't play a whole lot of this track because it's unreleased at the moment, but I'll stick in a little bit of the audio here.
So there you go. Those are all the things that I'm enjoying about UAD Luna. If you saw the first video that I did, you can probably tell how far Luna has come in the past year. We've had so many updates to the software and the way UAD have implemented a user feedback system so we as Luna users can suggest things that we want to appear in the next update, I think is a really clever move. For me, it is now my door of choice, mostly because of the awesome integration that it has with the UAD hardware and just the sound that you get from Luna. As I said in the intro, I don't think my work has ever sounded as good as it has now I'm working in Luna. It's by no means perfect. There are still a few things that we do need to sort out. Things like Shape and RealVerb Pro not working. That's all probably gonna be sorted in this most recent update, but there are still a few little niggling things that do need fixing. Things like no controller support, a big one for me is that we can't do multi outs from things like contact. So for example, when I'm writing tunes and I'm using VST drums and I want to multi out all those drums to various different channels, something that is a piece of cake in Studio One, you just can't do it in Luna. But I'm fairly certain that'll be coming in an update pretty soon. But on the whole, I'm really happy with it. And so are my clients, which is kind of the most important thing. I've been getting really good feedback from clients saying how much they love the sound of things that I've been producing in this room. And I think a big proportion of that is down to Luna. So I definitely say if you have some UAD hardware, why not head over to the UAD website and download Luna? It's 100% free, so why not just give it a shot? I don't think you'll be disappointed. I found the transition moving from Studio One to Luna a piece of cake. And if you're coming from something like Pro Tools, you're gonna find the transition even easier. So give it a shot. So there you go, guys. Thanks for watching this video. If you've enjoyed it, give it a like below. It really does help me out. If you want to watch another video on my channel, you can click just up here. And don't forget to subscribe. You can do it right there. See you in the next one.